Hi, I'm Dr. Aparna Pandya and welcome to Dentist Channel Online. Today we have with us Dr. Ernest Prince, who is going to talk about post-treatment diseases in endodontics and techniques to avoid them. Dr. Prince has done his BVS and MDS uh, at PN MGR University, Chennai and Rajiv Gandhi University, Bangalore, respectively. So as a bachelor student, he has attended various conferences held in state uh, and has won several prizes for his presentations. While in master's, he has attended various national and international conferences. He's currently working as an assistant professor at CSI CDSR Madurai and is specialized in single visit endodontics and is practicing in partnership with many private clinics. As a faculty, he has uh, trained several students and has contributed to various publications in national and international journals as corresponding author with uh, more than five publications as of date and is uh, managing his own clinic. It is a great pleasure and absolute honor to have you with us today, doctor. Over to you. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Abhanna Pandya. Thank you for being the host in this webinar uh, session. So just uh, jump into the webinar. Also, I welcome all the uh, attender, attendees who have uh, joined the webinar for this, uh, this dentist uh, channel. Doctor, am I audible? Yes, yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. Okay, okay. And your screen is also visible. Okay, thank you. So, okay, good morning, all. Uh, it is almost good afternoon. So, let's try to uh, uh, just get into the detail of some to so topic called uh, post treatment disease and endodontics and method to manage. So in our private practice and in our uh, general practice, uh, what we come across is uh, even after the root canal treatment, uh, some uh, patients will have uh, a small discomfort, pain or sudden uh, swelling. Uh, so what are the uh, possible causes that can lead to this uh, post-treatment disease, in this uh, root canal treatment and how we are going to manage it? So myself, Dr. Anas Prince uh, Pagasin, uh, associated with the CAC Dental College Madurai. And I also have my own uh, practice in Coimbatore under the name of the Hedge Dental. So in the recent years, the number of people seeking the endodontic treatment has dramatically increased because of the conservative tendency towards the RCP over the extraction. So in 2004, Friedman, he said he gave the report with the initial uh, success rate of endodontic treatment to be 97%. The prevalence of apical periodontitis and other post-treatment periradicular diseases always exceeds 30 percentage of all the root canal treatment. So in uh, previous uh, decades, the failure was uh, it was considered to be a failure. The undesirable outcomes of the root canal therapy was considered to be a failure. But uh, in the recent times, Dr. Friedman he termed the disease called as a post-treatment uh, disease to describe that cases that the previously had been referred to as a failure. So in 2008, Hapasalo, he, gave, he defined post-treatment endodontic disease as the presence of an inflammatory periradicular lesion, which can be present periapically or laterally in the previously root-filled tooth, when the lesion no longer can assume, be, assume to be undergoing uh, healing follow-up with the root canal treatment. Again, in 2002, he, the Friedman gave another definition wherein it goes that the disease associated with the radial lucidity about endodontically treated teeth with the apical periodontitis, then it can be considered as a PT. However, as this disease has persisted despite treatment and reoccurred after having healed at first or emerged during the follow up period after treatment, it would appear approximate. We characterize it as persistent, recurrent, or emerged apical periodontitis. So, the post treatment endodontic disease can be mainly classified under four subtitles 
that this is the flare up post treatment apical periodontitis the vertical root fracture and the split tooth or the crack tooth so in the flare up this defined as a occurrence of severe pain and swelling following endodontic treatment appointment requiring an unscheduled visit and active treatment so what what are the etiopathogenesis of an flare up condition so first is the alteration of the local adaptation syndrome so in the body it is a general rule that whatever is irritant or a stimuli is uh, given to the body the body tries to adapt itself that is called as a local adaptation syndrome so local tissue adaptation to applied irritants uh, the candid tissue becomes inflamed when they are exposed to an irritant the chronic inflammation will persist and if the irritant is not removed then there is something called as a local adaptation however in addition to this local adaptation when a new irritant is introduced the body uh, identifies it as a new threat and it can lead to an uh, inflamed tissue a violent reaction that might occur this can lead to the flare next is the microbial factor, uh, factors they are uh, lacks and grows uh, millions of microbes that are present in the uh, root canal in the oral cavity and the root canal but there is uh, all the microorganisms does not produce this uh, toxins but some microorganisms produce something called as the endotoxin and collagenesis which in turn activates the blood factor that is called as a hegman factor this leads to the production of uh, inflammatory mediators like bradykinin which is a potent pain mediator which will cause you the uh, sharp shooting pain in case of the flare ups the endotoxin also activates the complement system that is the c1 to c10 factor thereby enhancing the inflammation through the release of the vasoactive chemicals the endotoxin also causes degradation of the mast cells and release of the collagenase from the macrophages enhancing the resorption of the root canals so again changes in the periapical tissue pressure so increased periapical pressure ex excessive exudates which is not absorbed by the lymphatics in the oral cavity periapical uh, system would tend to create pain by pressure on the nerve endings of the root canal when the root canals are open the fluid would just tend to be forced out when the periapical pressure less than the atmospheric pressure the microorganisms and altered tissue proteins would be aspirated into the periapical area resulting in the accentuation of the inflammatory response and severe pain so a small clinical tip here would be so always you, you should use a saline irrigant before the completion of an root canal treatment so that maximum number of microbial load and the bacterial load can be eliminated from the uh, root canal system also this should not be used excessive amount of pressure the limited amount of pump pressure should be used in an upward and uh, downward motion that is a vertical motion so that uh, Uh, irrigant along with the microbes it is not extruded out or it is not pushed into the root canal system through the apical foramina always dry the canals as maximum as possible also any change in uh, the apical pressure uh, can be caused uh, by uh, forcing of the instruments in the canal suppose we use a 15 number size file or 20 size file for the initial Uh, cavity probing <coughs> on the root canal patency we should not force the instrument beyond the apical foramen beyond the apical foramen when we are pushing the instrument the to carry in number of bacteria load and the necrotic debris through the foramen into the periapical space which will be very difficult to remove so always use a working length radiograph and an apex locator before uh, attempting an initial uh, before attempting the biomechanical preparation so again the next it will be the vertical root fracture the vertical root fracture is regarded as a special type of post treatment endodontic disease and it can occur in non endodontic treated teeth but in roots which have an root filling like a post or any uh, other cast post or fiber post although the vrf is not true apical periodontitis it causes signs and symptoms which are often misinterpreted as persistent or emerging apical periodontitis it's always confused with the uh, post treatment apical periodontitis so very vertical root fracture can occur in any tooth so the difference between the vertical root fracture and the split tooth is the vertical root fracture occurs in any tooth and it is always present in the buccal and the lingual towards the buccal and the lingual direction starts in the root and is often invisible at the beginning both clinically and radiographically except for the possibility of pain 
Later, a narrow pocket is developing or through the tooth surfaces, the, through the where the crack is present, through, through the crack, the radiolucency is going to be seen. Okay, because why uh, this because of the uh, residence of the bacteria present between the two between the broken parts of the tooth in the root. So the infection is caused with the bacteria residing in the fracture lane, escaping from the host defense. So again, a small clinical tip in the vertical root fracture and the split or the crack tooth will be minimize the amount of instrumentation. Where, whether it is uh, premolar, molar, don't try to uh, enlarge the canal uh, very uh, um, very exaggeratedly, like if you are uh, limiting it to 25-6% or 25-4% in the mesial and the distal canals respectively, that is more than enough in case of molar. In case of central incisors, uh, 30 or 40 size uh, master cone with a 4% or 6% taper would be more than enough. Similarly, in premolar, 25 with 4% taper or uh, 20 with 6% or 4% taper would be more than enough. So violating the epical foramen, what will happen is we are just introducing the wedging effect. Wedging effect is nothing but it is going to separate two objects. Okay? So when you are trying to minimize the pressure in the instrumentation, we can avoid this type of vertical root fracture and split or crack tooth. So split or crack tooth is nothing but there is a, literally there is a crack in the tooth, but it extends only in the uh, mesial and distal direction. Whereas it is not seen in the buccal and lingual direction as in the vertical root fracture. And it occurs only in the premolars and the molars. It often causes symptoms that can be confused with the post-treatment post endodontic disease. The common consequences of the infection caused by the crack is the narrow mesial of the distal pocket. The crack itself is invisible radiographically, but the bone loss can be uh, caused by the infection that can al always be seen. The clinically, the pocket may be difficult to locate without careful probing. So another side of tissue destruction caused by the crack is at the furcation. If the crack extends through the pulpal chamber, pulp chamber flow, then it, the possibility of saving the tooth is very less and the other treatment options like heavy section should be planned. As in vertical root fracture, the bacteria remain in the crack and cannot be eliminated without removing the dental hard tissue surrounding the crack. In deep cracks, this is not possible and the tooth must be extracted. The split tooth is a continuation of a crack tooth. In split tooth, there are always two separate tooth fragments. Split tooth is therefore easy to diagnose and it is a treatment option. If it is difficult, you should always go for the extraction. So one more uh, investigation point of view or diagnosis point of view or uh, how we can differentiate between a split tooth is a crack tooth is by passing through and uh, by trans illuminating the light. The trans illuminating the light, what will happen is the normal light, the light is going to pass through the tooth structure from the buccal to the lingual surface. But whereas uh, in case of a split tooth or crack tooth, the crack is going to stop the propagation of the light and you're not going to see the light rays on the opposite sides of, of the illumination. So post-treatment disease, again, can be classified into emergent, persistent, and recurrent. Emergent is nothing but when it just develops after the treatment. It is caused by bacteria that is not present in the kennel before treatment, but introduced in the kennel following a breach in the aseptic conditions, wherein we fail to sterilize the instrument pop properly, wash the instrument, clean the instrument properly. This uh, emergent type of uh, uh, post-treatment epical periodontitis can occur. The persistent, if the persistent, uh, if the persistent, despite the treatment, if the uh, pain is there, despite the treatment, then it is called as a persistent typical periodontitis. It is caused by the bacteria that was always present there before the treatment also. Recurrent, even after the treatment, uh, there is absence of signs of epical periodontitis, but later again, uh, there is a development of disease after complete healing that is called as a epical periodontitis. Uh, Post, uh, recurrent type of post treatment epical periodontitis. So, again, what are the etiologies? They, they can be broadly classified into uh, before the treatment, during the treatment, and after the operative treatment. So, what are the before the treatment are the pre operative causes, wherein there is incorrect intra oral examination and misinterpretation, wherein we, uh, di we uh, misdiagnose, misdiagnose the proper tooth of. Uh, 
where the origin of pain tooth and we treat an, uh, another tooth in case of a split tooth or crack tooth or non vital tooth vital tooth so it's always better to use uh, uh, additional adjunct adjuncts like endo <coughs> uh, ice packs and uh, gp sticks to track the sinus uh, tract and radiographs to identify the lesion next is a misinterpretation of misinterpretation of the radiograph in case of odontogenic or developmental lesions an anatomical landmark should always be uh, marked in case, anatomical landmarks should always usually the premolar mandibular premolar so there is a mental foramen and in case of uh, anterior incisors so there is usually the incisor foramen so next is the improper and also we should uh, uh, we should take care of the in, in inferior alveolar canal that may run close proximity to the roots of the mandibular molars 7 8 and 6 okay so when it is in close proximity with the top uh, root of the molars so extra care should be taken in case of working in identification biomechanical preparation as well as your irrigation any uh, irrigant or calcium hydroxide or any uh, irritant that is introduced into the inferior alveolar canal it can lead to permanent or uh, temporary damage of the paresthesia of the uh, involved quadrant because inferior alveolar nerve is involved so this also is a cause of uh, post treatment neurotic disease so improper case selection the patient cooperation their clinical technical difficulties patient systemic conditions non restorability then root resorption should always be considered uh, we should not always be in a haste uh, to complete the root canal to just uh, keep the make the patient sit and do the root canal but we should also consider all the patient factors because that can always backfire at us at any moment and uh, it will again it will only lead to the uh, tarnish of our names and our practice okay So again, next to the inadequate sterilization of instrument, as I already said, you should always sterilize it in a uh, proper uh, sterilizing medium, usually autoclave, and the file should always be maximize maximally. You should always uh, discard the files as once as one or once or twice we use, okay, to prevent the file fractures and other uh, carry carriage of miscarriage of uh, in infections into the other tooth. For operative causes, the failure to obtain the biological ob objectives. A biological objectives is nothing but the shielders, uh, mechanical and biological objectives, wherein we have to maintain uh, canal cone, conical taper preparation in case of uh, <coughs> root canals. Failure to maintain because it is a natural anatomy of tooth appears to be like that. So we should always try to maintain the shielders, biomechanical objectives of taper preparations. a uh, failure to object, uh, failure to maintain that can lead to perforations can lead to uh, lidging can lead to transpiration of canals and also failure to remove the pulpal and periapical tissues so access cavity preparation while well, access cavity preparation always before going in for the access cavity preparation unless you have you are a super expert in the field please do not uh, blindly go in for the access cavity preparation see the angulation of the tooth in the radiograph Look for the cement and amel junction where it is present. Usually, the orifice is located at the cement and amel junction. Just measure it with the measuring gauge, and then measure it in the bar, and then you can access the cavity with the bar. So blindly, if you just if we uh, access the bar, then it can lead to uh, this orientation of the bar, and it can lead to perforation of the access cavity. So Overextended and underextended preparations. Are also one of the causes. The canal preparation, uh, like perforations, like this canal blockage, instrument separation, we should always remove the dentinal triangular breaks so that we will get a straight line access to the uh, working uh, straight line access in the working length <coughs> to the apical foramina. One more thing is, while canal preparing the canal, never ever violate the apical foramina. Apical foramina is the one which is going to give you the uh, stop. It is going to differentiate your periapical tissue from your root canal. So never ever violate your apical foramina. Try to maximize your, uh, uh, try to minimize your preparation in uh, your apical foramina preparation. 
so defective observation uh, overfilling and underfilling can also lead to uh, the this imbalance in the uh, infection uh, imbalance in the bacterial movement if it is overfilling it can just cause an irritation to the periapical tissue most of the times i see in the groups such as uh, i don't want to mention the name but i i see most of the groups in the facebook they uh, put uh, they just uh, keep an over extended filling and they just uh, tell that after 6 months that it has been completely healed the patient has no pain but better always it is better to avoid the over extended gps and over extend over instrumentation of the canals okay under extended filling it is uh, again once you prepare the canal then the apex or beyond the apex and when we underfill it there is always a passage that is going to be left in the underfilled area in the underfilled area the bacteria can again uh, uh move from the uh, like a cornfield cell in the said in this mountain pass theory it can move from the uh, periapical tissue into the root canal system and then it can again lead to the uh, pain or the swelling so next is the post operative cause uh, different causes of post operative uh, maybe the poor poor post endodontic restorations we should always uh, uh, the full um, tightly give fluid type seal in the root canals and also the post endodontic restoration trauma or fracture once we prepare the tooth we are going to once we will uh, attempt the root canal treatment we are obviously going to remove the vital tooth structure vital pulp from the tooth structure once you remove the vital pulp from the tooth structure the tooth is non vital and it becomes very brittle and uh, loses nearly half of its strength so as soon as possible it is always better to uh, crown it with an uh, prosthesis otherwise the force is going to fall in a uh, wedging manner and the tooth is going to fracture it can also lead to the failure of the treatment failure of the initial root canal treatment so next is the impaired periapical healing superimposed non endodontic infections periodontal disease excessive orthodontic forces so these are the causes you have to eliminate before you are diagnosing with the post traumatic post treatment endodontic disease so this is one of my cases uh, where the consultation i had uh, attempted uh, in relation to forces so in this x ray you can see uh, the uh, the the x ray looks almost normal i mean uh, we were not able to identify any missed canal <coughs> any uh, lesion as such but uh, we were able to identify a small lesion in in the in the, in the region of mesial mesial side of the root so we just uh, put the patient on antibiotics and uh, uh, and painkillers but the patient was not uh, resolving so again we went into for a cbct image in the cbct image there was clearly a uh, big lesion in the in the case in the the mesiolingual root so what we did is we just attempted the uh, retreatment and we kept the patient under observation with calcium hydroxyglycine for two weeks we just uh, waited for the lesion to resolve and then we proceeded with the <coughs> uh, treatment so what i am trying to tell is just use the adjectives like cbct like uh, other uh, diagnostic aids it always be helpful in your uh, diagnosis so what uh, the power of cbct is uh, huge the reason for failure may not be clinically and radiographically discernible in some treated teeth in these cases the use of cone beam computed tomography may be of great help to reveal the probable cause of post treatment disease including the missed or additional canals poor poorly prepared or filled canals root fractures perforations and aberrant anatomical variations thus the cbct may be indicated as a valuable adjunct diagnostic tool in some retreatment cases unfortunately the radiograph and cbct cannot tell you the information about the disinfection how much amount of disinfection has happened in the initial root canal treatment cannot be <coughs> Uh, retreat. I mean, the pathogenesis of the post-treatment disease. This we all we know before because uh, initially there is a per, due to the persistent uh, or re reintroduced intra-radicular infection. Uh, slowly, the infection becomes extra-radicular infection from the intra-canal. It becomes extra, it goes from extra-canal and becomes extra-radicular infection. 
by the bacterial cells invaded via the root canal space periodontal pockets infected dentinal strips and contaminated instruments it is usually destroyed by the host response but in case of bacteria like actinomyces israeli propion propioni bacterium propionicium and e fecalis they resist the host response and they continue to cause the damage so next the process of foreign body reaction can happen where in cases like over extended filling materials cellulose fibers on the paper points gutta percha points and sealers they are usually well tolerated but tissues inoculated with the microorganisms and there is lower incidence of healing and it, then it can lead to what is called as the cyst there are different types of cyst we all know periapical cyst periapical true cyst periapical pocket cyst usually heal after the rupture is not treated it breaks to form a true cyst periapical true cyst is a self propagating lesion no longer dependent on the root canal system being infected the root canal therapy is surgical removal this was reported by nayer et al in an article uh, which goes by apical periodontitis a dynamic encounter between the root canal infection and the post response so how we are going to manage this post treatment endodontic diseases first is the non surgical endodontic retreatment surgical retreated a uh, surgical retreatment and extraction so we have to consider and think once or twice is really retreatment is necessary it is very much needed or we can go in for other options like surgery and implant we always have to take the dynamic uh, we have to uh, take the right choice so hope this is going to help you so retreatment is usually a reasonable treatment option only if the reasons for failure of primary root canal treatment can be identified like in missed canal case in missed canal and in case of uh, infections or perforations can you identify it then you can go for the retreatment which is not possible in all cases so if it is indicated only for teeth in which technical management seems feasible where periodontal support is sufficient and the tooth can be restored to function retreatments can also be indicated as preventive and preemptive treatment in teeth without apical periodontitis or clinical symptoms but with questionable quality of the primary root canal treatment so an extensive tooth structure and restoration has to be sacrificed and remade the potential for future disease has to be considered morphological alterations resulting from previous treatment at present unusual technical and therapeutic challenges the healing rate is generally lower than the initial treatment because of greater difficulty in eliminating the infection patients may be more apprehensive than with the routine initial treatment so the case selection is very important the considerations complicate the subject to process of the case selection the presence or absence of the disease is determined according to clinical and radiographical findings outcome of root canal treatment should be assessed at least one year at least after one year so that the success of root canal treatment can be uh, documented so according to strindberg he classified uh, the treatment as success when it was when there was absence of symptoms radiographically there was evidence of normal periodontal ligament and some widening around the excessive filling excess filling material Whereas we consider the treatment to be a failure when there was presence of symptoms and radiographic evidence of decreased stat and stasis and increases decrease in the periradicular rarefaction or appearance of a new rarefaction. If the radio lucency that was present during the initial treatment has not resolved but has not reduced but has just increased in size or a new rarefaction has developed, then it can then it is usually uh, classified as a failure of treatment. and friedman and more okay this i'll be talking in the next coming slides so criteria according to uh, cj radel he said success criteria was when periodontium uh, was healthy including a normal attachment apparatus the teeth should be asymptomatic that the teeth should be able to function equally well on both sides radiographically it should demonstrate healing or progressive bone fill over time and principles of restorative excellence should be satisfied So Strindberg again in 1956, he gave two criteria that is success and failure criteria. Clinically, there should be no symptoms. Radiographically, the contours, width, and structure of the periodontium margin were normal. The periodontal contours are widened mainly around the excessive filling. 
presence of symptoms and failure. Uh, clinically, there should be presence of symptoms. Radiographically, there should be decrease in the periradicular infection, uh, periradicular rarefaction, unchained periradicular rarefaction, and appearance of new rarefaction or an increase in the initial rarefaction, as I already mentioned. So, these points can help you out in deciding whether you have to attempt in case of retreatment. So, Friedman and Moore in 2004. He gave three classification that is healed, healing, and disease. So this you can very well use in case of your clinical practice and in patients, where you can just explain the patient that the lesion is healing uh, when the clinically it is normal and radiographically there is reduced radiolucency. Then you can explain the patient that is diseased when the radiolucency has emerged or persisted without change, even when the clinical presentation is normal. Clinical signs or symptoms are present even if the radiographic presentation is normal. So either one, either one, if it is uh, not matching the criteria, then it is then Friedman and Moore consider it, a, it as a diseased tooth. So whether to treat or not is the next question. So when you can uh, possibly look out for favorable outcome is when the actual when there is absence of pain, swelling, and other symptoms. No sinus tract and no loss of function. And when the radiograph is normal with uh, enough fidial space around the tooth. When there is uncertain outcome, when the lesion has remained at the same size or has diminished in size, in this situation, it is advised to access the lesion further until it resolves or for a period of minimum four years. If the lesion persists after four years, RCT is considered to be associated with PT. Unfavorable outcome, the tooth is associated with signs and symptoms of infection, and radiographically visible lesion appeared subsequent to treatment of pre existing lesion has increased in size. Signs of root resorption are present. In this situation, it is advised that the tooth requires further treatment. So, non endodontic disease or healing process should be carefully considered as differential diagnosis. Case history should be reviewed, previous radiographs, past symptoms, a time elapsed from the previous treatment, and previous attempts at retreatment or epical surgery should always be considered. So, again, the difficulty assessment uh, points would be core material. How strong is the core material? Can we eliminate before retreatment? We have to uh, just analyze this point. So, uh, just check for the core material, what core material has been placed, either if it is biodentin or if it is any NTA or sort of core material, then it is going to be very difficult to remove. So in those cases, you have to take a critical decision, whether it will be very helpful for the patient, whether the age of the patient, the medical illness like diabetes, hypertension or any uh, cardiovascular disease comes in between the, comes before <coughs> Uh, consideration during the treatment and remaining heart tissue. If there is only less amount of heart tissue, just think whether it can be saved after the treatment using a uh, post and core or any other uh, treatment options like any section or that's it. perforation. If the perforation is enough, uh, like percussion is involved, then usually it is better to extract the silver cones. The silver cones are present, whether it can be removed, you just <coughs> take a radiograph, CD, CT, in the clinical picture, and then you have to decide. Consider the mouth opening and the um, accessibility to the uh, tooth as well. In case of seven, uh, six, and eight, you have to take a critical decision whether the accessibility and uh, patient cooperation will help you in this treatment. Uninstrumented canal, ledges. Ledges is a very important factor. I have seen in my clinical practice when there is a ledge, when you see a half instrument, uh, half underfilled uh, uh, obturation, you always have to think of uh, ledge of the kennels, whether you'll be able to bypass the ledge, search for the amount of uh, curvature that is present in the root canal, then you can confidently attempt the uh, treatment. Blockage and apical periodontitis. So next is the benefits versus the risk. So a treatment procedure is the beneficial to the patient if it is in some way conducive to his welfare, health, or both. When considering treatment alternatives, therefore, 
the factors should taken should be taken into account that can potentially affect those two aspects of benefiting the patients that is the benefit and the risks so benefit the treatment retreatment okay there was so in this you have the benefits and the risk sorry so in the benefits if it is a retreatment it offers a better chance to curtail root canal infection by excluding the microorganisms within the canal and if it is apical surgery it offers a better better chance to curtail the extra radicular infection but what are the risk in case of retreatment it depends upon the type of restoration as i already said if it is a very hard restoration it is very it is a poor uh, prognosis type of root canal filling or other obstacles that are to be eliminated apical surgery it depends upon the location of the treated root in proximity to anatomical structures such as the nerves blood vessels sinuses muscles or roots of adjacent teeth on the accessibility of the roots um, as determined by the thickness of the buccal alveolar bone plate and depth of the buccal vestibule so i would like to mention there something called as the nikolov syndrome nikolov n i c o u l a u syndrome wherein uh, when a uh, material or irritant like in the case of calcium hydroxide when it comes in contact with the blood vessel it just enter the blood vessel or any vital structures and it can cause their the necrosis of the vital organ as well as the uh, death of the organ as well as your uh, coagulation uh, necrosis of that particular organ okay so and also thrombosis of the blood vessel so it should always be considered carefully uh, so always uh, be careful manipulation of this uh, uh, intracranial medicaments for using for your second appointment the modified benefit risk balance the patient consideration tooth consideration clinical consideration and previous treatment attempt previous treatment attempts <coughs> so when you can consider for the patient and the motivation for reiterating tooth is pushing is for retreatment and surgery the patient is motivated highly motivated then go for retreatment or surgery if the patient is not motivated the teeth is not uh, ready for uh, the tooth is you know the tooth is not going to be a successful then go for extraction the motivation to pursue the best long term outcome for the patient is positive then we go for retreatment otherwise go for the surgery because epical surgeries they have uh, because they are directly accessing the uh, infected area and they are removing the infection so it can lead to uh, more uh, treatment success when compared to the retreatment The critical time concerns when the time is uh, uh, kind when the time constraint is there. Then always uh, never opt for the retreatment, but go for surgery. When, uh, similarly, financial concerns is there. Uh, don't go for retreatment. Go for surgical procedure. The root consideration, the site of infection, infection by root canal microorganisms is best eliminated by retreatment. Whereas the infection by extra radicular is always best eliminated by Excuse me. Eliminated by apical surgery. In contrast, infection associated with the vertical root fracture or fracture cannot be eliminated by either procedure. Then we have to always go for the extraction. In case of uh, vertical root fracture, there is a radiographic finding called as a J-shaped defect or the halo-shaped defect, which you already seen in the previous slide. So in those cases, we can eliminate it from the normal. Uh, Secondary epidural periodontitis, and we can consider it as a vertical root fracture and remove the extract the teeth. So root canal complexity. If it is highly complex, then please avoid the retreatment procedure. The main obstacles that should be considered are the calcifications, diverging root canal systems, suspected ledge, hard setting cement, broken instrument, the feasibility of overcoming these obstacles must be assessed. Consequently, the benefit-risk balance may or may not change in favor of the surgical alternative. So, the perforation in the past, the presence of the perforation was considered an indication for surgical intervention. But in recent days, with the advancements of uh, bioactive materials like MTA, uh, biodentin, teracel, and those those materials, the perforation management has become a uh, vital part of the retreatment. the surgical procedure should also include external repair of the perforation and attempt to that the guided tissue regeneration the restorative periodontal and aesthetic factors the teeth considered 
when the teeth is considered a hopeless restorative or periodontal prognosis it should always be extracted with the compromised periodontal support surgery may result in unfavorable crown root ratio so always uh, think of retreatment before extraction so clinician consideration to always consider the clinician's capability of performing the procedure armamentarium special instruments are present and then you should always uh, consider the optimize the benefit risk balance of both retreatment and epidural surgery time availability in specific circumstances like remote areas community clinics where the clinician is having a booming practice it is always the clinician starts whether he has to uh, attempt the treatment and uh, attempt, attempt the retreatment and waste this i mean 50 percentage only when that is chance it is always uh, better to think twice before attempting a retreatment in the circumstances only and without a referral option surgery is recommended rather than the complex retreatment the previous retreatment attempts is a previous orthograde retreatment or epical surgery procedure did not result in healing the quality of that procedure should be evaluated if the initial case selection is considered to have been appropriate but the quality is improvable the same procedure can be recommended again otherwise the alternative procedure is recommended as it may better address the site of infection and capacity of the healing so again prevention it can be uh, we have seen about the management now we can prevent how we can prevent this as i already said we can always use the adjunct diagnostic tools like x rays cbcts uh, angulated x rays in case of molars and premolars in case of lower premolars always look for an extra canal always look for an uh, bifurcation in the canal or split in the canal always look for the vertices classifications in the second and the first premolars mandibular premolars so the factors that can affect the emergence of post treatment endodontic disease are the adequacy of the coronal seal the adequacy of the root filling and the need for new restoration so oh sorry that was a, okay endodontic treatment and its outcome the success rate of retreatment as revealed by well controlled studies ranges from 62 to 82 percentage the approximate 10 to 20 percentage lower success rate related to the following reasons like inability of completely removing the previous obstruction inability of correct previous errors which may limit access to the residual bacteria resistance of the persistent bacteria to the antimicrobial loads difficulties to reach persistent bacteria loaded in areas distant from the main root canals so periapical surgeries and outcomes studies have reported a high success rate for surgeries when performed using magnification ultrasonic routine preparation and routine fillings in materials such as nail proxyl aggregate intermediate restorative material and superintoxy benzoic acid so rubens et al reported 91.5 percent success over 5 to years 7 years greater than those excuse me greater than those quoted in the earlier studies of endodontic periapical surgeries So the best success rate can be achieved when the great treatment is done first, followed by a periapical surgery, if it is indicated. So uh, that was all about the knowledge. I just I wanted to share with you, uh, people, uh, doctors. So if you want to detail about the healing and the success of the root canal treatments, you can go into a study called as a Toronto study. They are available in. Uh, northern clinics of dental america okay so in the conclusion what i want to tell you is identifying the possible causes of the post treatment apical periodontitis and approaching these cases accordingly will provide a high success and survival rate of the post treatment endodontic disease okay that is all thank so, you so much great... okay thank you so just wanted to thank the dentist uh, online channel first of all and um, host dr abarna and my hods my uji hods pg hods my dear wife and my newly born uh, boy baby and god finally thank you it was really a beautiful presentation sir we got to learn a lot about um, post treatment endodontic diseases so this is a topic thank that you. we did not talk much about so it was wonderful you, to you. know about like as far as practicing practicing dentists are concerned it's a big issue post treatment endodontic diseases yes yes, yes.
uh, and like uh, i don't know like just general dentists and uh, specialists in other fields are not much aware about uh, this concern yes yes, yes. yeah so, that, that is what the general dentists when they are practicing they should always uh, plan it properly before attempting a root canal treatment just to be in a haste uh, not all dentists but some dentists they try to finish it in a single setting and yes. which can lead which can lead to an uh, unrepairable or unmanageable uh, failure root canal treatment so which becomes even the specialized dentist and the root canal specialist to treat it so uh, this uh, i hope this seminar will help them to uh, definitely definitely manage the cases Yeah. So we'll take up some questions. Before that, I'll just show you the. I'll just share the company presentation. Um, so dentist channel online is the first uh, digital dental uh, dental media, and uh, our services are provided to both dental professionals as well as dental organizations. We provide dental news, webinars, courses, events, videos, IT services, prime membership. uh article submissions dental businesses you can contribute videos and you can also buy and sell your uh, dental products as far as dental organizations are con concerned uh, we host events that are graphic designing which is provided social media marketing for your clinics website development participate all the participants will be getting a certificate at the end of the seminar there will be event registration consultation services content writing and you can list your business on our website and also advertise with us and uh, uh, we have conducted more than 700 live dental webinars and more than 25 plus dental workshops there has uh, been more than 40k participation certificate which is issued and more than 400 national and international speakers are associated with us we also have more than 300 oral care videos under the hashtag save the tooth so we have also been listed in india book of records for having maximum speaker participation in virtual dental program on oral implantology so you can avail the prime membership and the benefits of availing prime membership is that you can have unlimited access to all our uh, webinars and special courses which are provided by dentist channel online with a special discount to certain uh, limited courses so we also provide certification with uh, which is recognized with institutions and provide cpd cd points and you can always download your certificate from the website your dashboard and there'll be regular updates of news about our dentistry you can have uh, you can participate as a speaker or submit your articles uh, and public uh, and publish public aware videos so like i said uh, all the participants will be getting cpd cd ce program uh, uh, certificates after each webinar so why wait you can avail the prime membership at a very reasonable cost of 799 per year and by using the promo code ap100 you will get assured discount so these are our upcoming uh, webinars and thank you doctor for this wonderful presentation thank um, you Yeah, so your presentation was so good that we do not have any uh, questions yet. Thank you. It cleared all the doubts in the mind of all the dentists. Okay. However, I I was wondering that you know like um even when a general dentist is doing RCT, what are the other things that he has to keep in mind so that he can prevent this sort of thing other than you know treatment planning and all that while doing the procedure? What can we do so that you know it doesn't happen? Okay, basically is yes. uh, just follow the basic principles what we are being taught in the, the academics, you know, like in the third year and fourth year. If you follow that, that is basic. Follow the basics, then it can help you out. The main other things that we can consider is just check the radiographs whether the tooth is angulated inside the yes. bone, whether there is an extra root, whether the tooth is calcified, whether you can see the canal. If you cannot see the canal, then just if you If you are if you are still in a doubt, then you can take an extra radiograph and see. Mm. If you are still in a doubt, then you can go for CBCT as well. Because CBCT is not very costly these days. I can see yeah. play, uh, some uh, scan centers offering for six hundred, four hundred, eight hundred also. Okay, so that is not an issue. The one more thing is you always, always never uh, be in a haste to do the access cavity preparation, thinking when you get the dip, okay, I reach the access cavity. No, it may not be the access cavity. It can be a lot. 
outside the tooth also okay <laughs> so just uh, so just uh, measure the uh, measure the stimulation amble junction the size of the crown in the tooth and uh, the x ray you can see the orifice level okay where it has been placed and where the roots are starting till that if you measure and that measurement if you convert it, if you take the measurement of the burr and then if you prepare the axis cavity then i think uh, the basic uh, perforations can be uh, managed next is the file initial file never rest with the file as as all the rotary uh, organization still like you should never ever skip the field and you should always follow the glide path first initially if you are even expert with the canalis calcifies when you put a 10 15 size or 10 20 size file it might lead to ledge it may lead to a ledge which can never be accessible again you can uh, uh, instead of uh, doing it for 5 minutes uh, to conserve the 5 minutes you take that bad step and you lead to to an extra half an hour so yes, that yes. is not So yeah. always go for the glide path and then follow with the normal instrumentation, rotary instrumentation. Okay. Everything will be fine. Also, one more thing is never either uh, all all the uh, other the uh, other than root canal specialist can be saying uh, never feel bad to call an endodontic specialist so that uh, never feel like another doctor has to come and work in the clinic. Never do that. Just they are there to help you out. Maybe the charge is uh, optional though. But just uh, call them and just uh, get their knowledge. It is not like you, you need to call all the all the cases. You need not call them. Just get their knowledge when they are doing. Just observe so that you will get some uh, insight into the uh, root canal. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. Thank okay, you so thank much you, for this insightful presentation. Thank It you. was wonderful. We can conclude the session. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.